Madden 21 is, for all intents and purposes, a critical failure. Um, it's currently sitting at about a 66 right now on Metacritic, and it doesn't seem that the user base is giving it much love. Now, I understand that people like to review bomb stuff. It's the era we live in. I think it's nonsensical. Honestly, I don't really focus on the reviewer portion of games this controversial because people are just giving it zeros. Um, so I'm focusing on the, the critical scores from established journalists, although I have my issue with them too. But in this case, I'm going to defer that they actually sat down and played the game. Problem I see with a lot of these review scores is that um, reviewers are always afraid to speak their minds. And I go back to the story that I've told so many times the year I was at E3 the first time um, at the EA uh, Access event. Uh, EA Live or EA Play, I think is what they called it. And um, I saw an IGN guy walking around with his microphone in one hand and his sack of goodies in the other. And as he was talking, he made sure to put his hand way down below the camera so he had his microphone up here and he was talking. And it was just so corny because you saw him, and I watched him stand, I was five feet away from him listening to him conduct his interview or his uh, review of the event. And he talked about how great it was and how much fun they were having and all these wonderful things. Meanwhile, everybody's miserable. It's 150 degrees outside. There's no places to get any water. There's no shade. The computers are overheating. The lines are long. It's a total disaster. But this guy was having a blast because he's getting free stuff. Now, that problem was always carried with me forward in reviewers, and that's why I'm always skeptical of them. So take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt, but I'm going to say this. Madden 21 is a disaster. And it's not a disaster because it's inherently broken from any other previous year. The problem is that there's been no originality and the series has finally stagnated. And I'm glad reviewers are finally starting to take a much more critical look at these annualized franchises. We've seen it with a lot of other famous games. We've seen it with Assassin's Creed, probably most notably. A franchise that started off really, really hot and it was great. And then we saw Assassin's Creed 2 and all of these spin-offs. But as the time went on, even though Ubisoft was doing the exact same thing year and year again, you know, changing out characters, quests, whatever, the shell of the game was the same. And people got tired of it. And it started to get poor scores. It started to get poor sales, which caused Ubisoft to take a year off. We obviously know they came back with Assassin's Creed Origins met with critical acclaim, and that kind of rebooted the series. Now, it's a little bit harder to do with annual franchises, particularly the sports variety, because these partners, uh, you know, the NFL, the NBA, and uh, any of these major leagues, sign deals with companies, and they're not cheap. And basically, in a way to recoup their loss, these companies are constantly pushing out new products every year. Now, if, if they're doing something new and unique and fun, that's great. The problem is you can only do so much with a sports game, at least in the mechanic side of things. Um, you have to focus on other game modes. You have to focus on presentation. You have to focus on incentives to keep playing, whether it's some kind of like goofy mode, kind of like what NFL Blitz did, where it was just way over the top, you know, hitting people after the whistle kind of thing. Whether you want to go on the other side of things, like they did with the NBA Street, where you're, you know, or NBA Jam even, where you're, you know, playing and you're shooting three-pointers from the other end of the court and you're slam dunking, you know, 500 feet in the air and just being crazy over the top in that way. Whether you want to do score attacks, whether you want to have a more grounded simulation where you weave in a single-player story, where there's decisions and you kind of see your character work your way through the ranks. The problem is Madden has done none of those things. And it's finally gotten on people's nerves. I've seen it, uh, most honestly for me, I've seen it uh, years ago and I, I quit buying Madden. I think I bought the last Madden I bought was like Madden 13 or 14 because it just started to feel very samey to me. That and the fact that the Bears are trash and I'm tired of playing with them. But um, the truth is, all kidding aside, uh, the truth is that we have a very just stagnant series. And as I mentioned at the beginning here, there are other series that have done that. We've seen that with WWE. Um, most notably, they actually, they canned NBA, or uh, NBA, they canned WWE 2K20 in favor of WWE Battlegrounds. It totally changed the formula up because the last WWE did so poorly. 
And I think it's a, I think it's time for game companies that annualize franchises to take a really hard look at what they're doing. Now, there are notable exceptions, although I, my wife disagrees with me. I think Call of Duty continues to be a phenomenal experience. I think they do enough each year that does warrant a fun experience and dropping new maps and dropping new modes and dropping new weapons, changing up times, changing everything. I, I feel like they're one of the few that has actually kind of figured it out. And the sales and the Metacritic scores reflect that accurately. Um, however, I, I think Madden is yet another one of these annualized franchises that just probably needs to take some time off. Um, with COVID going on, I'm not even really sure we're going to have a football season this year. Maybe we will. But, um, you know, the truth is it's probably okay if we skip a year. And I know EA is probably going to lose a lot of money and maybe potentially lose that partnership. But, you know, this kind of negative press is very hard to come back from. And honestly, you look at a game like Star Wars Battlefront 1, Star Wars Battlefront 2, that series is tainted for all intents and purposes. That That's going to be very hard for that series to come back and say, hey, look, we fixed everything. And when a company gets off on the wrong foot on something, it's hard for them to fix it without taking some time off. They have to change names. They have to change release dates. They have to change just the whole experience. That's something you saw that successfully was done, like I mentioned, with Assassin's Creed. Maybe will successfully be done with WWE Battlegrounds. It remains to be seen. But the truth is this, and I'll close the video out on this note. Um, competition is what is really not happening here, and that's what's driving the stagnant design. Uh, you have a company in Electronic Arts Tiburon located right here in Orlando, right by me, right down the street, maybe 10 minutes away. Um, I know right where their building is. Um, I want to go knock on the door and be like, guys, you have gotten lazy. You've gotten very, very lazy at what you do. And it shows you've gotten very lazy at what you do because look at the product you've put out. You haven't added enough new features. You haven't fleshed out bugs and, bugs and problems that have been consistent in this series for years. And it's time for you guys to just take a step back and maybe start over, maybe a new engine, maybe a new strategy, maybe just a fresh start. But clearly you guys have gotten very run down. So with that, um, I'd like to close out this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts on that and let me know your thoughts on annualized franchises. Uh, they do have some good ones. They're hard to find, but um, I think it's time for Madden to take a break. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.